And now the story of an evil queen who's trying to kill a baby, and the one Nell who had no choice but to keep her from killing a baby. It's a Willow Development. Today's video is a classic fantasy adventure, Willow, directed by Ron Howard and story by George Lucas. Like, that's an amazing team up. There's a lot of people that say it's a ripoff of Lord of the Rings, but that's absurd. It's a ripoff of Lord of the Rings and Empire Strikes Back. A prophecy is foretold that a child will be born that will bring about the downfall of the powerful Queen Bav Morda. And so the Queen imprisons all of the pregnant women in the realm so she can destroy the child when it's born. A baby is born that bears the mark. And before the queen can kill her, she is smuggled out of the castle by the midwife Ethna. Ethna travels for months, but gets tracked down by the Nakmar hounds, so Ethna places the baby in the river. And so far, this is all eerily reminiscent of the story of Moses. Come on, George. I know they say there's only seven stories, but you gotta change it up a lot more than this. The baby washes up on the shore of a nearby village, which is the home to a race of tiny people known as the Nelwyn, who are not hobbits. The Nelwyn clearly wear shoes. The baby is discovered by the children of local farmer and wannabe sorcerer Willow Ufgood, and Willow tells them that it's a Daikini baby, and Daikinis are this movie's version of normal humans. N not that the Nelwyn aren't normal. Before they can decide what to do with the baby, the prefect Burglecut shows up to give Willow some shit. Up good. You still haven't paid your debts to me. Where did you get these seeds? I sell the plant seeds around here. Now tell me where you got them. I'd be like, what the hell is this capitalist bullshit? I don't want to work myself to death. I just want to eat seven meals a day and just lounge around drinking beer and smoking a pipe. I don't want a boss. This is supposed to be a fantasy world. Willow's wife Kaya wants to take care of the baby, and the next day the Nelwyn are having a festival where the High Aldwin will choose a sorcerer's apprentice, and Willow believes that he'll be chosen and is putting on a magic show. I want my this entire pig disappear. Daru! <laughs> and also, Willow's kids have no idea that they just witnessed their father being a humiliating failure in public. But when they get older, they'll look back on it, and it'll all click, and their relationship with Willow will never be the same. And also, basically when they say sorcerer, do they just mean close-up magician? And so it comes time for the High Alderman to choose an apprentice for the first time in years, and he's going to select it from a pool of three finalists. Well, off, good. Oh, how did he get picked? Is this a joke? You know, Burglecut sucks shit, but I kinda have to agree with him on this one. Like, wouldn't a sorcerer's apprentice need to be able to do actual magic? He can't even do party clown magic. And I bet the two other dudes are like, thank god Willow is here to be an insult lightning rod. But seriously, why the hell do they all treat Willow like absolute trash? He's portrayed as like the village f up, but he has his own farm and a part-time gig as an illusionist. Plus he has a wife and kids that love him wholeheartedly. Not like he's the town drunk. And you're probably screaming, oh they don't like him because he can't slam dunk a basketball. And I'm like, none of them can. Because in their stubborn pride, they set the hoops at 10 feet, which is the standard height for a regulation daikini hoop, and no no one can even get close to making a basket, let alone slam dunk on a ball. And now being a sorcerer's apprentice is a major undertaking, so of course the right candidate will have to go through a rigorous screening process. The power to control the world is in which finger? No apprentice this year! That's how they choose new bartenders at Applebee's. And if the High Aldwin sounds familiar, it's because he's the same actor who played the iconic Gwildor in Masters of the Universe which I just so happen to have a video on. Check it out here. Just then a Nakmar hound attacks the village sending the Nelwyn fleeing for their lives. And that dog they have playing the hound is just having the time of his life. Look at that good boy, he's playing with a baby crib. <laughs> That's delightful. The warriors of the village slay the beast and they realize that the hound was looking for a baby and Willow says that the baby isn't safe and they have to take it to the village council. Now the village council is not a council of wise elders who use reason and logic to come up with solutions. They're kind of like what school board meetings are now. Just a bunch of drunk idiots who don't even have children and believe in witches. Who's to blame for this? We must find the culprit and throw him in the pit! Like that. The High Alderman declares that Willow must take the baby to the Daikini Crossroads and give the child to the first Daikini that he sees. But first, Willow will need help from a group of traveling companions. A fellowship, if you will. Joining Willow are his best friend Migash, Vonkar, who is the greatest warrior in the village, and a few of his men, and Burglecut, whom the High Alderman personally chose, probably because he hates Burglecut just like the rest of us and hopes that he'll die. And before they leave, the High Alderman tells Willow that he has the potential to be a great sorcerer and gives Willow magic acorns that will turn whatever they hit to stone. Tawatha. Go cloth rock. Twatha. Go in the direction the bird is flying. Oh shit. 
Hi, Aldwin. That bird is going way too fast. The Nelwyn don't have long legs. You didn't even give him a heads up. Oh, man. Yeah, that bird is gone. Ignore the bird. Follow the river. You know, the High Aldwin completely f***ed up his magic trick. Why isn't anyone calling him a worthless piece of shit? Beth Morta sends her daughter Sorsha and General Kale to bring the baby back to her so she can perform a ritual that would banish the child's spirit into oblivion. They make it to the crossroads and come upon a prisoner named Mad Mardigan, played by Val Kilmer. It's Tycoon. We're in luck. We can't give it a him. The High Aldwin instructed them to leave the baby with the first Daikini they see, and Burglecut is a very literal Nelwyn, and wants to leave the baby with a man trapped in a cage. And like, Burglecut sucks, so this fits with his character, but everyone else just agrees with him. Yeah, well at least give me some water! He'll be such a good provider. Seriously, they're just like a few miles from their village, and the fellowship is over. I mean, if I was them, I would at least camp out near the village for a few days so it doesn't look so bad. Well, that was really stupid, Peck. The hell does Peck mean? The only one who decides to stay with Willow is Mika. Gosh. And just then, the Galadorn army rolls through. Uh, out of the way, Peck! Okay, people say it with such hate and venom, so it is definitely derogatory. Oh, and luckily, Mad Mardigan is friends with the Captain Air. Yeah. <laughs> Mad Mardigan! Give me a sword. I'll win this war for you. You serve no one. Sit in your coffin and rot. Okay, I guess they're more like acquaintances. Mad Mardigan pleads with Willow to let him out and swears that he'll take care of the baby, and they finally agree. <sighs> Oh gosh, no. Mad Mardigan, don't pick them up. They don't like that. I know from an incident at Santa's workshop at the mall. They do not like that. They release Mad Mardigan and he leaves with the baby. And soon after, Willow and Migosh see the baby being carried away by the Brownies, which are a race of even tinier people than the Nelwyn. The Brownies are led by the fairy queen, Sherlindria. Take my wand, the sorceress Finrizel. She will guide you and Adora Denim to the kingdom of Tiraz Lee. You know, I enjoy high fantasy entertainment, but the names of people and places is very hard to follow for me. Yeah, they should make all these movies just set in America. Like, have this movie set in 1997, and like, have Willow just go by Will, and maybe have it take place in Detroit. You must drive to Grand Rapids and meet the caseworker Deb. This baby's name is Cheyenne. Sherlindria tells Willow that the child is Alora Dannon, and Alora has chosen Willow to be her guardian to help her fulfill her destiny of destroying Bath Morta. I love when babies have blood feuds. And Willow tells Migosh to go back because Willow must undergo this journey alone. But Migosh is a Nelwyn, and Nelwins do what needs to be done. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Oh, okay. He's he's leaving. Um, all right. I was really expecting a Sam and Frodo type of dynamic, but uh, no. Migosh is just gone. How long will it take to find this result? She's been exiled to an island. What are you saying, mysterious island? Don't play with that one. Only a great sorcerer can use it, not a stupid Peck like you. Oh, you guys are even smaller than Willow, so Peck doesn't seem to be about size, so it has to be a derogatory term based purely on race. My god, not a lot of tolerance in this land. The Brownies, Rule, and Frangine lead Willow to a nearby village, and they go into a tavern to find help. Could you spare some milk for this poor hungry baby? Get out of here, Peck! Okay, these are the kind of people I can see using that slur. Find Mad Mardigan again, and they all take off with Sorsha and her men in pursuit. They make it to the lake, and Mad Mardigan takes off on his own, and Willow leaves Alora with Rule and Frangine while he goes to find Finn Rizel. So are we just gonna leave this baby with smaller and smaller creatures until she's living in a center for ants? Willow finds Finn Rizel, and finds that she's been transformed into a rodent by Bav Morda. But Sorsha shows up and takes them all prisoner. Willow tries to use the wand to turn Finn Rizel back into a human, but turns her into a crow instead. They break out of the cages, and Mad Mardigan gets actually accidentally doused with the dust of broken hearts, which is the brownies version of ecstasy. And Mad Mardigan sneaks into Sorsha's tent to get Alora and sees Sorsha sleeping, and Mad Mardigan is hornier than usual on account of his crippling dust addiction, and he gets sidetracked. Can I stop the beating of my heart? It pounds like never before. Out of fear. Out of love. I can stop it. So he's acting like this because of drugs, and she's falling for it because she just woke up and is very confused. Just then, Kale busts in and they discover the baby missing. And Mad Mardigan and Willow take off down the mountain, and they crash into a village with Sorsha and her men right behind them. The villagers hide Willow and Mad Mardigan in a cellar, and they find Eric, who says that all of his men were slaughtered. I can't see Tara's lean. Tara's lean? Even if he could find Peck. Jeez, Eric, you just met him. And the soldiers begin ransacking the village. Find the child! She ain't under this table, boss. Mad Mardigan then takes Sorsha hostage. You said you loved me. I don't remember that. You lied to me. Uh, no, I was just pretty f***ed up. 
Willow and Mad Mardigan get away with Eric's help, and Sorsha manages to escape, and Willow and Mad Mardigan make it to Tira's lean. They find that everyone has been turned to stone. Willow tries again to turn Finn Rizal into a human, but he turns her into a goat instead. Which, yeah, he didn't turn her into a human, but, but if I turned something into a goat with magic, I'd be pretty damn stoked. Sorsha's men make their way to the castle, and Willow gets attacked by a troll. Willow, use a wand on that troll! Yeah, Willow, like, use your wand to set his rear end on fire and have him run away yipping. It'll be hilarious, and the kids will love it. Better than Jesus Christ, Willow. I know trolls are evil, but that has to be one of the most awful ways to die. Like, what the hell did you do to him? So Willow turned the troll into a two-headed monstrosity that literally should not exist. And I imagine some of the troll's consciousness is still trapped in there, just begging for the sweet release of death. That was my husband. Without his income, me and my babies are sure to starve before the spring. <laughs> So the two-headed monster troll is probably helpless, trapped in his own mind, watching as this new foul beast he has become consumes the love of his life. Oh, Willow, what have you done? You turned my brother-in-law into a monster and I just watched him eat my sister. And now I'm the only one to look after their five children. Please, I have to survive. The youngest child is in a wheelchair and I'm the only one who knows how to administer their medicine. Oh, Mad Mardigan, not you too. And so Mad Mardigan shows the troll the only kindness anyone ever has by ending his waking nightmare. And just then, Eric's army shows up and Sorsha realizes that she loves Mad Mardigan and fights alongside him. And Kale takes Alora and fights through Eric's charge. And Willow breaks down in tears because alora has gone, but honestly, some of that is probably the slow dawning realization of what he did to that entire troll family. And Mad Mardigan convinces Willow to go after them, and they ride to the gates of Bavmorda's castle. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's not that funny. Beth Morta casts a spell over the army, and not since Lampwick and Pinocchio have children witnessed such extreme body horror. Like, good God, did Beth Morta learn that spell from Willow? Because that seems like a sick thing Willow would do. So Beth Morta begins the ritual, and Willow finally succeeds in turning Roselle back into a human. Alone in a tent with a naked elderly woman while being surrounded by feral pigs? Ah, to be a teenager again. And Finn Roselle turns everyone back into humans, and now they have a great sorceress at their disposal. But can you imagine get us inside the fortress? So now they have a just okay sorceress at their disposal. The next morning they challenge Bav Morta again. <laughs> Man, these people are really hard up for entertainment. Again, it might be amusing in a villain sort of way, but not laugh out loud funny. So the battle begins, and Willow, Sorsha, and Rizel go to confront Bav Morda while everyone else fights outside. And during the battle, Eric is killed by Kale, and I gotta say, if you're ever given a heroic death in battle, hopefully it won't be ruined by you rolling downhill, because that takes a lot of the dignity out of the situation. Mad Mardigan is now a man possessed, and he goes for the final showdown with Kale. Oh my god, Val, be careful. Oh my god, you got me right in the face. Oh, Ron, can we cut? He hit me in the face. I am actually bleeding. But f stop it, Val. Shit, I'm hurt. Willow then uses his magic to send Alora into a realm where she cannot be hurt. And he makes her disappear and Bev Morta is destroyed. And even though this whole movie has been building to Willow being a great sorcerer, the disappearing baby was again more of his sleight of hand parlor tricks. It was just my old disappearing pig trick. Oh, Willow, don't call a baby a pig. Again, I, I know from experience, there was another incident. So Willow returns home a hero, and I'm guessing everyone in his fellowship that abandoned him will live the rest of their lives in shame. Yes, like that. Just get bird shit in your mouth every day until you die. And also, because I felt I didn't have enough on my plate, I have decided to start a gaming channel. And the gaming channel will grow and evolve over time, just as I get more used to it. So right now, it is just Let's Plays. And the first Let's Play I'm doing is Willow for the regular Nintendo. 
Now, I know what you're saying. A Let's Play channel in 2022, and you're starting with Willow for the NES? How does Distracted Nerd always have his finger on the pulse of society? It's a gift and a curse. Now, I know a lot of people don't like watching other people play video games, but even if a gaming channel is not your thing, just consider heading on over, subscribing, and then you never have to go there again. And once I work out the logistics, I could do breakdowns of video games just like I do the movies. Like I said, it's all just balancing time at this point. But in the meantime, head on over there, drop me a like, a comment, subscribe, even if you don't want to, and let's see what we get. All right, thanks for watching.